This here is a package from a viewer. And I'm gonna give a huge shout out to Dennis. If you're watching Dennis, big thanks for sending this out. Not only did you offer to send it, but also cover shipping. And on top of that, you're also a Patreon supporter. So just uh, very appreciative across the board. In here is an AIO, you'll see from who in a second, but it has some problems and we're gonna do a bit of a deep dive into what specifically is going on with these units and who might be affected. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. So a bit of backstory here. Dennis reached out via Patreon, told me that he had an AIO that was running exceptionally hot. This is something that wasn't happening to begin with, so he assumed there was either a leak or the pump had failed or something had clogged the loop. He reached out to the manufacturer and they offered to replace his unit completely for free. In fact, they didn't even ask for his old unit back, which I think is the way to handle these sorts of issues, especially ones that affect many individuals across the world. Turns out this issue is a lot bigger than just a single problem. So this here is the Lee and Lee Galahad AIO 240 RGB. I believe even the 360 mil variants of this cooler have been affected by what is essentially a clogging issue. Again, very similar to what we ran up with the MSI AIO fiasco that you can check out, I don't know, we'll put a video in a card somewhere, maybe in the description. But long story short, Lee and Lee is approaching this entire ordeal a bit differently than MSI is. I not only wanna to call to attention that in this video, but also wanna talk about why these units in particular are failing and compare and contrast these issues with those that we saw in the dying MSI AOs as well. There's a lot that's gonna happen here. The first thing I wanna do is unbox this, we'll physically inspect it, and then we will connect it to an open air test bench. We wanna see if we can replicate the overheating issue Dennis was initially describing. We're gonna treat this kinda of like a fix or flop video. Dennis was kind enough to include his mounting gear with this AIO, so that's good. Uh, we don't have fans, but that's not a big deal. We can just tack some of ours that we have on hand. Also wanna take a moment to show you that, nope, there is no leak in this system that would not be the cause of the thermal issue, supposedly. Uh, it is a bit dirty overall, but it's not likely to affect thermals to that extent. Uh, the block looks fine. There aren't any you know, large gashes or anything in it. Now, unlike the 240Rs from MSI we've looked at previously, these Galahad AIOs have their pumps mounted inside the block, which is pretty typical of most Asetek designs. There's nothing here in the radiator apart from the fins. So we're gonna jump straight into the first test, which is gonna be our control. I've got a 5700G here paired with a B550 motherboard with a compatible BIOS. We don't need a discrete card, because of course this is an APU. And then we're gonna throw on a Wraith Prism cooler, which actually doesn't ship with this normally, uh, but this will allow us to establish the fact that the CPU does operate within normal temperatures at idle especially. If the AIO that we're going to be dealing with here is clogged, then even under idle conditions, say in the BIOS, we should start to see temperatures climb in the long run. And of course, that shouldn't happen, especially with an air cooler like this one with normal BIOS settings and thermal paste applied. And since I've mentioned thermal paste already, I'm actually going to use a carbon pad here from Thermal Grizzly. This will ensure even more consistency between tests since we won't have to keep reapplying and cleaning up thermal paste. All right, and it's been about 15 minutes off camera here between clips. I've allowed the system to simply idle in the BIOS. You can see temperatures are pretty much flatlined at around 44 degrees Celsius. This graph here represents about a five minute time frame and temps have not changed. It typically only takes about 10 or 15 minutes for a air cooler like this one to thermally equalize. Now it's the AIO's turn, and for this test, we're gonna allow it to run for around the same time, maybe a bit longer. It depends on how quickly the fluid in this loop thermally equalizes. It takes a bit longer usually than an air cooler. I'm also going to slap on two 120 mil fans. I'm not gonna change anything in the BIOS. We're gonna run the exact same fan curves as the CPU cooler from the earlier test. Yes, I know, it's a bit of a mess, but just know everything is connected. I've even connected some Silent Wings 4 fans, which I think are a bit better than the Lee and Lee ones you'd normally get in the box. I'm going to go ahead and power this on and see how she fares. Now, right away I can tell you, we definitely have air moving through the radiator. We definitely have fluid churning in the loop. So the pump is perfectly fine, uh, but time will tell as to how these temperatures fare. Also, if you hear thunder outside, sorry, welcome to Florida in the summer. A few moments later. And you know what? It hasn't been all of two minutes yet. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the screen because well, it's pretty obvious what's happening. So this, my friends, is the current state of things. 61 degrees Celsius, 62 now, and climbing. You can see those temperatures slowly creeping up over time. 
and I imagine this will only continue to get worse until it hits, again, some sort of equilibrium. It'll be probably around 75, 80 degrees Celsius, which is what we've seen with the MSI AIOs that have also clogged in a similar fashion. So uh, I'll let it run a bit longer. I don't want to totally cook my chip. That circulation is definitely being hindered by something because again, we've checked the mounting itself is fine. We've checked that the pump is working. We've checked that the fans are spinning. The only other culprit here, apart from maybe not having enough fluid in the loop, is a clogged loop. And that's what I expect we'll see when we take it apart. You'll have to pardon the sound, it is absolutely pouring outside, but uh, we've got a bit of a situation here. So as you saw in the little time lapse, 84 degrees, that is definitely no good. And you can see here our CPU vCore has actually dropped significantly to accommodate for this uh, increase in temperature in an effort to keep things as cool as possible before, before it was like at 1.4, which is frankly way too high for uh, idle with most CPUs. Anyway, that is confirmation enough for me. Uh, that uh, this is in fact clogged. Dennis, you were right on the money, my friend. One more thing I wanna do is look at this through our thermal cam. I expect we're gonna see a lot of heat built up in one particular tube. Yeah, okay, so this tube here is extremely hot, and then this one feels almost room temperature. It's really strange to have such a big disparity in temperature between tubes that are frankly pretty close together. And that suggests again that there's a clog somewhere in here. Oh yes, as we thought, that tube on the left is super hot, up to about 120 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the tube on the right is just stone cold, uh, room temperature below even. So it's just, yeah, it's, it's another telltale sign that this is clogged. So we're gonna go right ahead and uh, power this thing off. I don't, yeah, I don't want it running any longer than it absolutely has to. I think our point has been proven. Dennis's point originally has been proven this thing's super clogged. Now, let's go ahead and uh, tear it apart, shall we? I think we're just gonna focus on the block side of this unit. I expect that's where we'll see most of the clogging since this is where the fins are, uh, not necessarily where the pump is. You could have some clogging in the pump and we've seen that before uh, with the MSI AIOs, but I think in this case, most of it's gonna be right over the micro fins. Let's see, we need Torx bits. Uh, this is another why do they, why, this is the second time I've seen tamper screws on the bottom of a cold plate. This is ridiculous. And it suggests to me at least that you don't want us going inside. For some reason, other companies, Corsair, Arctic, uh, Asus, as far as I'm aware, and from the AIOs that we have from them, they don't use tamper screws. Usually it's just a Torx bit or two and that's fine, but tamper screws are ridiculous. So I've got to use my uh, fancy little iFixit split head thing here. I don't know what this is, but it seems to help remove tamper screws. You can see the way these heads are shaped, they're only designed to be tightened. The moment you try to loosen one, the flat head, I'm assuming that's what you'd use here, would just slip over these little ridges on both sides. And uh, yeah, it's just a sleazy way to keep people out, so to speak. I'm gonna deal with the tamper screw first just because it's gonna be the most difficult. I don't want fluid spilling everywhere before we get this out. Oh, I gotta push down. Quite hard to get this thing to grip. I just realized there's another tamper screw underneath some of this thermal paste. Okay, so now I think we are ready to disassemble. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's uh, that's some gunk right there, folks. Basically all of this goo should not be here. This is pretty gross. I mean, even after a solid year or two of use in an AIO like this, you shouldn't have anywhere near this much gunk build. It maybe you see a few specks accumulate, particularly in the uh, little fin stack here, which we'll look at more closely in a second. But all of this is just clogging and preventing fluid from circulating, which means all of your heat's gonna get pent up right here in the block and it's not gonna be able to circulate to the radiator where it's supposed to dissipate to atmosphere. And you can see much of that debris has already clogged the fin stack. So we don't have a central channel like we did in the earlier MSI AOs we looked at, uh, but all of these micro fins are there to increase surface area so that you have more fluid contact with the heat uh, being absorbed by this copper cold plate. Essentially, the more of these channels you clog, the less efficient the loop becomes because you are basically taking away channels uh, for that fluid to travel through. And it looks like almost all of them are clogged here. I mean, I, I would be surprised if there was any channel that was totally unclogged so the fluid could just travel freely 
This is pretty sad and would explain why temperatures skyrocketed even at idle conditions. I would hate to see what this rig would do uh, with an AIO like this under load. That is definitely PC shutting down worthy. Like there's no way your system would stay on with something this clogged. Your CPU would just throttle itself into oblivion. Jeez, this is so bad. I imagine much of this gunk probably works its way back up into the radiator as well. If we have large debris here, we probably have some in the small channels inside the radiator. So just clogging all around, none of this is good. So now you know what goes on behind the scenes. If you have an AIO and your pump is definitely working, you grab the tubes, you can feel the, vib the vibration there. That's the fluid moving through the loop, or at least attempting to. Uh, if your fans are spinning and your block is mounted correctly, Correctly, and you're still getting an overheating issue, it's very likely a clogged loop. And if it's happening within a year or two of use, that is definitely premature and something your manufacturer should address globally if it is a global issue. But here is where I have a bone to pick with Lee and Lee. And look, I'll be blunt, we've been paid by Lee and Lee in the past for certain projects and things. Um, I'm a big fan of their cases, generally speaking. I like some of their power supplies. I've never worked with Galahad AIOs before, now, not directly that I can recall, maybe in a fix or flop video or something along those lines. Uh, but the issue I have is how long it took Lee and Lee to make a public statement regarding these clogging loops. If you go back a year, year and a half, on sites like Reddit, users were reporting extremely high CPU temperatures, particularly at idle with their Galahad 240 and 360 mil AIOs. I think the right thing to do here would be to issue a public statement after say a hundred or heck, maybe even a thousand users publicly express their discontent with a product around a particular reason, that being overheating, which a 240 or 360 mil should never do to a consumer grade chip unless the user is doing something in the overclocking department or just doesn't know what they're doing and you know changing crazy bio settings. Those are one-offs and I'm sure that happens from time to time. But when hundreds or thousands of people are making the same statements, expressing the same concerns over the same issue, that I think warrants some sort of public statement. And the fact that it took over a year from what I can gather for Lee and Lee to make one, that's the issue I have. Here's their statement. There have been concerns over a drop in heat dissipation performance from earlier Galahad AIO units after usage of one to two years. We were made aware of this issue in 2022 Q1. See there, that's again, over a year. If you were aware of this issue over a year ago, why did you leave so many folks hanging? This is an important and frankly, fairly serious issue. You're just leaving folks in the dark for this long? Who knows how many how many have been affected by them? I and the fact that Dennis, one of our few Patreons at this point, Patreon supporters, reached out to me with his unit. I mean, that tells me that there's probably a good chance several thousand were affected here, if not tens of thousands, depending on how many they sold. That's not a small number. And again, you're leaving a lot of folks hanging, questioning themselves, questioning their rigs, part swapping, doing whatever they feel like they have to do because the last thing they expect is for their brand new AIO to clog like this. The issue is that some of the units went through a second time soldering, flux repair for the radiator, and QC missed that the residue might corrode with coolant over time, resulting in failure possibility. This is somewhat broken English, but again, this is probably being translated from uh, simplified or, I don't know, traditional Chinese. The supplier had fixed the manufacturing process in 2021 October to make sure no corrosion occurred within coolant and no flux residue within radiator. Lee and Lee also immediately enforced a zero tolerance for second time soldering of the radiator and required a thorough QC process for each batch of coolant used in Galahad. Therefore, the Galahad units produced after 2022 Q1 should not have these issues. Now here's where I wanna compare and contrast their response now, despite it being much later than I think it should have been with what MSI has done for, frankly, a very similar issue. At this point, this looks pretty much spot on with uh, what the MSI loops have gone through. So since 2022 Q1, we have also internally prioritized the RMA process for Galahad AIO for users affected. Any customer that reports a decline in heat dissipation performance were sent a replacement unit. By doing so, we make sure users that are affected are taken care of as fast as possible. We will continue to follow this policy until every affected user is taken care of. They go on to mention eligible serial numbers, which I know I showed earlier in the video, just in case yours falls before this number that you see on screen, it's possible your AIO is already clogged or clogging. You can check your idle and load temperatures to verify. And even if your temps aren't super hot, I would still recommend being proactive. Uh, they are, to their credit, stating that they will continue this advanced RMA, this quick uh, replacement policy until every affected user is taken care of. But again, that's just 
that's what's written here. So uh, you've got to really put that to the test long term. And I'd rather have a replacement now than wait until temps are just skyrocketing and my rig is shutting down randomly because of that thermal load that's not being taken care of by a loop like this. Uh, so that's the difference between what Lee and Lee's doing and what MSI has done and is still doing based on the emails I'm still getting to this day. MSI said, hey, if you're in the US or Canada and you have an affected serial number, we'll send you a replacement and then you can send us your old unit back after you receive your replacement. That means that we're talking minimal downtime, maybe an hour or two, whatever it takes uh, time-wise to replace the AIO itself because you'll have the replacement already on hand before you swap your old one out. That's it, right? Very just quick and just a, a nice solution all around. I was happy that they did this. I was not happy with the fact that they limited this advanced RMA to just USA and Canada. I know I've already beat this dead horse, but just you know, know that that's what I'm really disappointed with on MSI's side. Lee and Lee, as far as I'm aware, based on what I'm reading here, is not even requiring that you send your old unit back. So they're just, again, verifying that you have an effective unit, maybe based on your serial number, uh, and they're sending you a replacement, no questions asked. This old unit was not asked for back by Lee and Lee. Uh, Dennis said that he was sent a replacement and that's it. They didn't ask for this. That's why we have it uh, because it wasn't sent back to their headquarters. So that's nice. I think that's also just a frankly better, quicker solution uh, for every affected individual. It's, it's a shame that not everyone handles things the way we'd like them to in our heads. No company is, is without sin. Um, you'll, you'll never find one that way. It's, they're all gonna have issues. What sets certain companies apart from others is how quickly they address the issues and what they actually do to remedy the issues. Um, Lee and Lee did it right by providing replacements free of charge, really no questions asked apart from proving that you purchased an older one but they did take a very long time to make the statement. Um, as far as I'm aware, they were still replacing units prior to this announcement, but the fact that it took them this long to make a public statement is what I think is disappointing here. And, and this goes off the back of what we had already discovered with the MSI AO issue, right? I mean, I, I still to this day believe that that first fix or flop video where we found the clogging AIO, um, was at least in part what led to the advanced RMA, the, the recall, even though they didn't call it a recall. And we pushed them hard on it. We pushed them as far as we could until essentially we hit a wall with uh, HQ in Taiwan. They wouldn't do any more for us beyond advanced RMAs for US and Canadian residents. So it's a, it's a bit of a shame that they're singling out several regions around the world and kind of just leaving affected users up to chance. If it's if the retailer is not going to take care of you and your local MSI branch isn't going to take care of you, you're screwed. Whereas Lee and Lee saying it doesn't matter where you live, they, they, they made no regional stipulations at all. If you're affected, we'll send you a replacement unit, no questions asked. So good guys Lee and Lee there, but you should have been faster about the public statement. Think about all the folks that were affected and had no clue that their brand new AIO was the issue. That's not right for them. So uh, in the future, be more proactive about that. And, and we have other companies that have been. Uh, I know Arctic was with their issue. I think there was a leak somewhere around the gasket with a tube connected to the block, if I recall correctly. Uh, Fractal Design had an issue. They figured out very quickly uh, what the issue was and offered a solution, uh, almost as quickly as the AIO was launched, if I recall. So that's how to handle it in a timely manner. And this is how to handle it from a replacement standpoint. Just Send a, send a replacement unit, no questions asked. It was our screw up, right? We manufactured these, our bad. We want you to still trust our products. Here's a replacement. We're, we're sure that it's not gonna have the clogging issue anymore. By the way, if your serial number comes after the ones we showed earlier on screen and you are still having overheating issues, let us know. Send us an email, I'd like to investigate. Again, we have some experience already with this from competing brands, so it'd be cool to see, uh, maybe not cool, but it'd be interesting to see how it all pans out in the long run, if in fact we can hold them true to uh, what they're saying here in the article. With that, I'm gonna go ahead and end it. Uh, I wanna thank Dennis again for sending this one out. If you guys found this interesting, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Let me know what you think about AIOs. The fact that we've had so many issues with clogging recently, and it feels like it's all happening all at once. <laughs> I don't know, it's definitely not restoring any faith in AIOs, for me at least, I'll say that. 
Sorry about that. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.